It's 1 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. This is the message this morning. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Peter, so the whole message of a few moments is based on this verse. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I told you that 1 Peter was written between 60 and 70 A.D., 30, 40 years after Jesus' crucifixion. I told you that Peter had been ministering, functioning, over those 30 or 40 years. My, had he advanced. The book is a, declare, it's a clarion call to many of the churches in what we would call Turkey. It was a clarion call to those churches to stand up and be counted, to live their life for Christ. It was clearly known around the world that they were a suffering people because of Rome and all of the restrictions that Nero, Rome, was putting on the church. And there's enough that he says in that book that makes it very clear, this is a suffering people. I found it interesting that God would use Peter. Did Peter start off in the place that he ended up, which is what the gospel is? We start off where God doesn't intend for us to end up where we start, uh, either naturally or at the end of our life to end up in hell, but to end up in heaven. And he doesn't, it's not his intention through the gospel of Jesus Christ for us to end up where we begin. So I look at Peter and say, well, where did he begin? Kind of a rough fisherman, let's say the end of the, his training period when he went to school with Jesus Christ. Uh, he was willing, uh, when the people were coming in the garden to take Jesus, he took out his sword, at least we have record. He lopped off the last individual healing we know that Jesus did, that we're given the documents of in the scripture uh, lopped off the ear of Caiaphas, really the high priest servant who was a part of that mob, and Jesus healed him. I don't know if he put the ear back on, if another ear sprouted, but that's what he was going to do with the, when the enemy came, take out his sword and fight. And as you know, when Jesus was taken captive and was, uh, the, the Inquisition began, and he was there nearby three times, and Jesus had warned him ahead of time, uh, you're going to deny me three times before you hear the crow cock. The scriptures reveal that that is what exactly happened, uh, that he did deny him, and eventually swearing I didn't even know him. So it's, it was interesting to me to take a man who started there. Where did he start? Well, not in a good spot. And you might even be in not a good spot right now. Uh, your performance this past week may have not been a good spot. You may have had a week or you may have had a year or your life may have been like Peter was. Those moments in Peter's lives I mean, it was like, it could have been incredibly discouraging to Jesus, three years under Jesus' ministry, walking with him, and he was in the upper echelon of the disciples. That when they're coming to take him, he draws out his sword, and he's ready to fight, a natural fight. And then he swears, Doc, he swears, I don't know this man, you're lying about me, I don't, I don't know him. What a discouraging moment that could have been for Christ. But 30-some years later, he's writing a book that's really written to the suffering people who are suffering and what to do and how to live life. I've thought, well, there could be some people who read that, uh, those, uh, I'll call it a circle letter, because it was addressed to a number of churches in what we call Turkey. And it, it obviously passed from church to congregation to congregation to congregation. Um, you ought to talk, Peter, because I'm sure by then they knew his reputation and how his final days around Christ. And, and they could have said, you're, you're a fine one to talk. Look how you live. And God brought him to a place where the Holy Spirit chose Peter. So I see this. Peter as an apostle of Jesus Christ. It's not just, okay, you've got to begin some way. Here's how to begin. I believe, based on all that are in, it's in the book, of First Peter, that this was a, a clarion description of who he saw himself, who he was. I am Peter. I am an apostle of Jesus Christ. What would you write? I, don't, I, didn't, I haven't counted how many words those are. Um, a wife in Jesus Christ, or of Jesus Christ. A husband of Jesus Christ. An employee of Jesus Christ. Would you put a citizen 
of the United States of Jesus Christ. How would you describe yourself? In such a way that it defines how you live. I was going to show you verses where in 1 Peter, Peter says, look, you're born again. You're born again of incorruptible seed. Be holy as he is holy. We sang about that. It's because of what you're born again with. It's incorruptible seed. So Peter defines himself, I'm Peter. I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ. He was admonishing them of how to relate in the book of First Peter. A suffering people, their, their circumstances were difficult. I think what just is stinging on the inside of me is John's statements that people in Japan will say, we're okay, we're fine, we, we have all the money we want, we have all the jobs and everything, but the suicide rates are the highest. It's incredible. It's incredible. And Peter was admonishing, writing, encouraging the great hope of what's facing us in eternity that we have ahead of us. But his admonishment was, live like a Christian. And he was especially focused on, okay, you're suffering. You're dealing with significant governmental suffering. And he had great counsel for them. He was also counseling, but don't let your suffering be as the result of your living wild lives, irresponsible lives. You're living how you relate to one another. You're living in envy, jealousy. So don't live that way. Don't, don't, don't be punished. Don't, don't let punishment come upon you because of how you live. Live as who you are. Like he started with who he was, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I believe when, she, when Peter walked, he didn't have a grocery store, I understand. He was an apostle of Jesus Christ. He stressed in there, if you're going to minister, minister as the gift that God has given to you. If you're going to seek to impact people, impact them. Why are you doing this? Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. The book is filled with that. Because of Jesus. He so focuses on Jesus. It was interesting to me. I'll pick this up in another week. There's 37 direct references to Jesus. There's three to the devil. In the book of 1 Peter. Every single one of those is incredibly important. Every one of the 37 that point to Jesus. Every one of the three that point to the devil. He's writing to people who are suffering. What's his counsel focused on? How did he present himself? How do we present ourselves? Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I believe his opening statement, in context of the whole book, and the emphasis of the book is we're now entered into a new year. Why do you do what you do? I think Peter's answer would be that you would say, I do this because of Jesus. Why do you tolerate what you tolerate? Because of Jesus. What do you mean? It's the example he laid down for me. Why do you say the things that you say? Because of Jesus. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. It's funny, I think God was trying to prepare me because I thought, you know, you could bring a whole message uh, this week as I've pondered this verse. Pondered, prayed over it. You could give a whole message on that verse. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. It was the theme of what his whole counsel was. 
that the Holy Spirit that gave to a church, multiple churches, multiple congregations, people, all kinds of circumstances that people in those congregations would have been facing. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. That should say it all. A neighbor. Who are you? Well, I'm your neighbor. And I'm in Christ. And he's my life. Why do you make the choices that you make? I'm in Christ. He gave his life for me. I'm giving my life to honor him and what he has given to me. It's his power. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. It says it all. Is that where he started? No. Is that where he was when he finished what I would call graduate school at a minimum? Walking with Jesus for three years. Uh, he was miles away. But when he was born again, at the very end of the time, after Jesus rose from the dead, and then was filled with the Spirit, where was he? Well, as time passed, God could use him to write such a book. The magnificent book of 1 Peter. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. 